Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Project Life Cycles. This is Lecture A. The objectives for Project Life Cycles are to identify process groups and knowledge areas in project management, differentiate linear, iterative, adaptive, and agile project life cycles, relate life cycle phases to reviews, milestones, and deliverables, Compare various organizational structures as contexts for managing projects. During this lecture, we will focus on the first objective and introduce the second objective. There are a few basic ideas that we want to revisit as we begin looking at project life cycles. First of all is the definition of a project as a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. And the recognition that health IT projects can be incredibly complex in terms of how many stakeholders, who are the stakeholders and their perspectives, how many organizations are involved, various constraints on budget and schedule, when the project needs to be completed, and working with all these stakeholders. So a lot of things need to be kept in mind when we are developing the life cycle for these health IT projects. Finally, remember that there are references out there, including the famous PMBOK, the Project Management Institute's Guide to the Project Management Body of Knowledge. The complexity and number of stakeholders, budget and schedule, in a healthcare IT project can really run the gamut. You can be working with a community physician and your team would consist of only yourself and maybe one other person. You can work in increasingly complex situations all the way up to a multi-year, multi-facility project where you might have 50 people on your project team. So you really can run the gamut in a healthcare IT project from very simple to very complex. In our exploration of project life cycles, we are going to organize it into four areas. First, the project management elements, sort of the raw materials you can draw upon, such as process groups, processes, and knowledge areas. Secondly, there are the four families of life cycles, linear, iterative, adaptive, and agile. The third area focuses on the phases and how they can help you organize your work and your management leadership efforts. And then finally, we'll talk about different organizational structures and how they work or not in terms of facilitating the project and providing a context for you as you manage your project. As we begin to look at common elements of project management, it is important to appreciate that on the one hand, there is really tremendous variety in projects and that is really a distinguishing feature of projects, that they are unique undertakings. On the other hand, in spite of this uniqueness, there are common elements that we can draw upon. 
understanding these common elements can help you assume your project management role. Some examples of these common elements include the need to plan and define the activities and to monitor how the project is going. Change is a constant with projects, so responding to change is something you will find yourself doing, regardless of the project. And certainly, understanding resources, how to estimate them, and how to manage them successfully in a project is something that is characteristic of all projects. Knowing these common elements will help you prepare to be an effective project manager. You don't need to go it alone in project management. There are communities of project management professionals that have been practicing over the years, and they have organized and codified a lot of the common elements that are helpful in managing projects. These are referenced often as guidelines and standards. Some of the community references are cited here. We have already mentioned the Project Management Institute, or PMI, which focuses on all kinds of projects in terms of domain areas. More specifically for IT, there are several organizations that have really active communities of practice. One of them is the International Council on Systems Engineering, which puts forward standards. Also within computer science and IT is the Association for Computing Machinery, and the IEEE, which is the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. These organizations can really help a lot. Be sure to check with your own institution. They may have some processes that they want you to adhere to during your project management process. Those can go a long way in helping you understand how the culture in your institution works and how to fit your project and your project management style into the institution. More specifically for health IT, there is the Health Information Management System Society, also known as HIMSS, the American Health Information Management Association, or AHIMA, and the American Medical Informatics Association, or AMIA. And there are certainly organizations in other countries that specifically address health IT. Still considering the common elements in project management, we look first at processes and knowledge areas. We use process in a particular way in project management. A process is a set of actions intended for a specific result. So, in a sense, we see these processes as being the raw materials that we can apply many times throughout a project. Some examples are given here. Estimating project costs is something you will find yourself doing many times throughout a project, so information about effective ways to perform that process are represented and codified as a defined process. Recognizing these processes can really be helpful. As a project manager, you can consider them somewhat to be building blocks in performing your project management role. Project management need not be entirely unscripted and original with every project. Instead, you can really focus on using these defined processes and adapting them as they make sense for your particular project. In an analogous way, the practice of project management has really illuminated the many knowledge areas that are called upon for you to be an effective project manager, and these knowledge areas have been identified so that we can study them as a way to prepare for the project management role. We want to look at these project management processes and knowledge areas because these are really valuable resources for your work. Using these processes and knowledge areas as a backbone or as a building block on each project really helps you implement the project quickly and efficiently. You can always find something new to add to your own processes that will help you manage the next project more smoothly, so always keep a list of these things that you can implement the next time. The first set of common elements is processes, and again, the Project Management Institute's body of knowledge identifies 42 such processes, and because there are so many, it is very helpful that they are organized into five groups. On the screen, we are showing examples of each of the groups, and you can see that they form somewhat of a sequence. 
In other words, there is a group related to initiating processes, which has such information as how to start a project, what are effective ways to identify stakeholders, and so on. Another process group relates to planning, and there is one on executing, one on monitoring and controlling, and one on closing. So again, there are 42 processes distributed among these five groups, and these are well-defined sets of activities that you can call upon at any time throughout the project to help you perform your work as a project manager. Your institution may have different names for many of these processes or groups, but it really does boil down to the same thing, whether you call it an initiating process group or you call it beginning. Find out what your culture calls it and be sure that you use that term among your team members, even though you can translate it into the PM process for yourself. As with processes, the Project Management Institute has organized the knowledge areas that you will draw upon as an effective project manager. There is a tremendous amount of knowledge that is required to be an effective project manager, but the PMI has organized it into these nine areas. There is a knowledge area that relates to your work integrating all the other activities in a project. There is an entire knowledge area related to scope. In the same way, there are knowledge areas related to time, cost, quality, human resources, communications, risks, and procurement. In some cases, you may be surprised that some of the subjects stand alone as entire knowledge areas, but this indicates the importance of these knowledge areas to effective project management. For example, there is a strong linkage between project management and leadership, which includes leading the team and representing the project to all stakeholders. And certainly, it takes more than knowledge to do this. It requires a special disposition and set of skills to be an effective leader. Communications is another one of the nine areas, and effective communications are vitally important. Particularly with health IT, the procurement of systems from vendors is often a major part of a project, so we see procurement here as one of the nine knowledge areas. This slide is highlighting some of the areas that perhaps you may not have thought of as being so important, but they are, in fact, tremendously important. The history of project management shows that so many projects have been unsuccessful because their managers have failed to take advantage of the importance of, for example, communications or understanding risk or leading a team. If there is a project manager in your institution that you think does a particularly good job, go and talk with them. Watch how they run their projects and ask them if you can use some of their techniques. It is always very helpful to have someone to bounce ideas off of, especially when you have a very complex project or if you are trying to get a particular group to understand what you are trying to accomplish. Having someone else to try out your ideas on is very helpful. Process areas and knowledge areas are really the keys to successful project management. Please consider these defined processes and understand the identification of these knowledge areas so that you can use them to your benefit as you manage a project. Consult references to show how these processes and knowledge areas can be used in connection with specific activities as a project manager. It is very important to use them in a way that makes sense for your specific project. You don't need to apply all the processes all the time. As a project manager, you must always exercise judgment to adapt these generic references to your project characteristics. Your team can get bogged down in executing too many formal processes that are really not delivering proportional benefit for expended effort. So as a project manager, this is an area where you need to be on guard so that there is a real benefit to all the processes that you use in a particular project. The bottom line for this section of the unit is to take advantage of these resources, processes, and knowledge areas, and to apply them when they help your project achieve a successful outcome. As we have said, every project is unique. For some projects, you will have an extensive planning process, while in other projects, you may have a small planning project or process and a very large educational process. Look at things you have done in the past that have worked well and apply them to your current project while remembering that each project is unique. 
Now we will talk about the transition to life cycles. Although the identification of process groups of initiating, planning, and so forth suggests that these process groups occur in a sequential order, it doesn't actually happen that way. The processes in these groups can be applied throughout the project as they are needed. In health IT projects, there is no single way to place all the activities and processes into some chronological order so that it is appropriate for all projects. This is where your judgment as a project manager will come into play. So when we talk about transitioning the life cycles, we are saying that the structuring of the project over time is what is actually addressed by the project life cycle. It will be an important challenge for you as a project manager to develop an effective structuring of these activities over time. Now we will begin talking about possible life cycles for your health IT project. For large, complex, multi-year projects, you may have one life cycle that goes throughout the entire project and then have multiple phases which are smaller, individual life cycles that fit within that project. But overall, these smaller life cycles are pushing the larger project along. Each project has a life cycle with a beginning and an end. The result of the project can be another health IT system, a new system that is integrated with existing processes and existing workflow. It can be that when your project concludes, it has developed a new service, perhaps an IT-enabled service. So we are talking about the project life cycle as being a structure that develops activities over time. This becomes the framework for you to manage the unfolding of the project. The framework can be structured as a series of phases, and these phases can be sequential and often overlapping as well. So a key element of a life cycle is a life cycle phase, and a phase is a set of activities that are focused on a specific outcome. Thinking in terms of phases provides opportunities to introduce a management review into your process, as well as to consider them as milestones to define the project and deliverables during the project. In an institution where you are phasing in a project over many months or many years, you may actually have a phase of the project that is just starting the planning phase, while another one is in the implementation phase, and a third might be in the closing phase. While these things can overlap with each other, they can be linear in process within each of those phases. One of your responsibilities as a project manager will be to define the project life cycle. You can do this with others. We certainly encourage you to do it with the project sponsor and the project team members, but know that it's really your responsibility to lay out this project life cycle. We want to look at how key characteristics of your project can help you determine the best life cycle for a project and how we should introduce and apply the processes from the five process groups. Recall that these processes can be brought to bear at any point throughout the project. How do we know when is the best time to apply them? How would you draw on the nine knowledge areas to manage your project? Defining a project life cycle is really project specific, and we want to look at the transition from key characteristics of a project to the kinds of project life cycles that are most affected based on those project characteristics. Here, we will discuss reference models for project life cycles. Life cycles for your projects, while unique, can be organized into various families or sets that have a lot of common characteristics. We are calling these sets reference models, and we want to examine some of the characteristics of four different reference models.
there's a good chance that your specific project in health IT will draw upon one of these four reference models, with adaptations, of course. So let's look at how these four reference models differ, and what characteristics of your project might lead you to one of these reference models as a starting framework. The four reference models are linear, iterative, adaptive, and agile. The first model, the linear model, has sequential phases, and that framework makes sense when you don't know a lot of the project at the beginning. As we continue down the list, you will notice that each reference model offers more and more flexibility when less and less is known about the project. So we will examine each of the four reference models to understand why you might select one as a starting point for you to frame the particular life cycle model for your project. During your life as a project manager, you will probably use each of these life cycles at some point. And you may, in fact, begin using one life cycle and decide that you need to switch to a different type because of the specific situation that you find yourself in. Don't be afraid to make those kinds of changes because none of them are better than the others. They are each just a different way of managing your project. This concludes Lecture A of Project Life Cycles. In summary, we have reviewed some basic tenets of project management, including the definition of project management and an understanding that the many elements within a project can be incredibly complex and varied. We have discussed process groups and knowledge areas in process management and introduced some of the differences between the four types of project life cycles.